Um, is that all the meeting that wants to please? If you would, uh, please stand for our presentation and pledge. Mike, would you mind bringing this? Sure. Sure. Uh, let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for this this body, this county, this great nation which we live in. Uh, give us the wisdom to make the decisions in the best interest of the county and its people. We ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Which lead in the of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item is item two, reading and approval of last month's meeting minutes. I'll make a motion to approve this meeting. We have a motion to approve. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Motion carries. Next. Uh, third item is old business we have none. Item four is new business. Uh, we have on item eight under new business is a conditional use. Um, I'd like to announce on the, we'll have a public hearing for this conditional use uh, for CU-190037. And I would like to ask uh, Justin, what the county's recommendation is? Uh, yes, sir. This uh, conditional use applications for a 25.75 acre tractor, uh, tractor property, uh, parcel IDs uh, 019015. It's an agriculturally zoned piece of property, and this is for a RV campground, and that's what's triggering the conditional use. Um, this piece of property lies in the Blaine character area as well as the rural development area it's split by them um, it fits in both of those um, I have some concerns with it and for this one I would like to ask the uh, Commission if they would render a decision on this application um, the application is presented is approvable if the requirements are met in the code as well as the site plan that they submitted. Um, however, uh, the appropriateness of the site is questionable. It butts right up next to a subdivision. Um, and then the access requirements would need to be met according to GDOT standards. And right now they're doing the 136 widening over there in front of that property as well as there's a large curve coming up next to J Moss. So um, GDOT would have to approve that access. Um, and hours of operation should probably be limited for the activities that they have planned. Um, other than that, our staff would like to ask the commission to render a decision on this one um, because of the extenuating circumstances of, about the site. Um, additional comments. Um, in addition to this memo, I would like to incorporate the entirety of the office's file and video recording of the Planning Commission's hearing, including but not limited to all witness testimony in order that this information be made part of the record and shall be available for the Board of Commissioners to review. If y'all have any other questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Are there any questions for Justin? <coughs> if not, is uh, Mr. Is it Fagley? Fagley? Yes, sir. Is there anything you would like to add or say? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. We're just gonna, it's going to be an RV resort. Uh, we plan to have, you know, uh, you know things not just a, just a camping area. It's going to be more, you know, for uh, short-term camping, not long-term camping. There's a difference between a campground and a resort. Mm -hmm. What are those? Well, it's like, it's, uh, a lot of times the campgrounds are just places where you know people will rent a spot for a month or whatever. Where we're going to be uh, inviting the you know the, the public as far as 
three-day stays or five-day stays or, you know, ongoing traffic for Carter's Lake and, you know, places like that. There's, there's really no campgrounds, no camping facilities available most of the time up there. We have um, several people that signed up. Um, I don't think they're all for this conditional use. Um, I would like to see they have how, how many minutes? 10 for and 10 against, sir. 10 for and 10 against? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so there's three, one, two, three. There's like six people here uh, that have signed up. So you each potentially have up to 10 minutes. Um, or if you would like, um, to have a nominated spokesperson, if y'all want to caucus for a few minutes and let one person be the same, you know, the spokesman, it's up to you. I'm just giving you the options. Also, please keep in mind that the um, you're addressing this body here, not Mr. Is it Fagley? Fagley. 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 Uh -huh. Fagley. You know, you're not asking him questions, and he's not asking y'all questions. It's, it's directed to, to this board here, please. So please keep that in mind. Um, so I mean, it's up, like I said, the six people that want to speak out, if y'all want to assign one spokesman or if all six y'all want to talk, that, that's fine too. So I'm just letting you know the options. So um, the first one is <coughs> Mr. Ricky or Rick. Is it? Basic, basic, basic. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I, I'm, I need about 90 seconds. I don't, I don't know that we need to caucus and appoint anybody, but uh, I own the uh, acreage directly across from the proposed campground. Um, bought in there at the end of 2012, um, and obviously I bought in there for reasons a lot of people buy in these areas to get peace and quiet and expecting to live in a residential slash agricultural area. And so I'm vehemently opposed to putting this RV park in there. I think there's going to be, uh, based on what I've, I've seen and heard, there's quite a bit of traffic coming in and out. There's a lot of transientness to, you know, add it to the area. Um, I don't think it's, uh, I know it's not zoned for such. It's zoned ag and residential. And uh, I would just ask that the uh, the Planning Commission consider uh, opposing this. Thanks. Thank you, sir. So you're across 136? No, I'm on the other side of Talking Rock Creek, directly across. Oh, okay. So from this, this backs up to you. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. David Rutherford. <coughs> if it pleases the Commission, um, David Rutherford, I'm a resident and landowner in Pickens County, and I oppose this for four principal reasons. Um, it's a nuisance, there's a safety concern, there's an impossibility and a failure of the Fegley's to meet the Planning Commission's own requirements. Nuisance, um, just as Mr. Bassett explained, uh, it's a residential area, people are out there because it is residential and ag uh, agricultural. I listen to a dog bark continuously in my neighborhood a quarter of a mile away. I can't imagine what it would be like to be backed up to a 55-unit RV park. In the event that this is approved, I respectfully suggest that what you'd be doing would be rewriting the law in Georgia on what does and does not constitute a nuisance. The safety concern, um, Mr. Kilgore mentioned it. It's uh, on 136, and notwithstanding the realignment that's going on, 136. It is in the middle, the access to this particular proposed development is in the middle of a very sharp vertical and horizontal curve. Um, I can't imagine um, what would happen in the carnage that would ensue out there with 35 and 40 foot travel trailers trying to pull out onto and into off of 136. You might as well put a, a kiosk out there for the plaintiff's personal injury bar 
<laughs> with the uh, accidents that would occur. The third item in possibility. Um, you've looked at the site proposal that the Fegley's have submitted. It's very dense, 55 units. And the one thing that they have not addressed on there are the sanitation concerns with the septic. Um, I respectfully submit that when, in fact, you look at what the septic requirements will be for this, it is virtually impossible to put an operating system on that. What they've shown you at the very bottom of their plat is an area that is ostensibly labeled for the septic. But if you run the numbers, you're looking at over 11,000 gallons per day, minimum. And that site simply cannot accommodate that. Notwithstanding the fact that at the back of the property, the track two is, which they don't plan on developing on because it's a floodplain. And that goes down to Talking Rock Creek, which is a trout stream. And so at that level, with 11,000 gallons per day, you're into the EPA and NPDES uh, requirements. And so I respectfully submit that when you actually look at what would be required for this type of development, it is impossible to do that. And finally, they've not complied with the county zone requirements. And in that regard, they've not complied with item G, which is if the proposed development exceeds 100,000 square feet commercial, then they'll provide a traffic study, hydrology study, water wastewater study prepared by a registered engineer. Now, what they've shown you on their plat is a 4,500 square foot building. But they've also shown you 55 RV spots that will occupy 900,000 square feet. And I suggest to you that that would warrant a hydrology study, a traffic study, and an environmental impact as per the Commission's own requirements. They've also not complied with items 3, 8, 9, 12, or 16. 16 in particular says that wastewater facilities including preliminary area reserved for drain fields and septic tank or point of access to public sewer where appropriate. There is no public sewer here. It'd be a septic tank. And when you look at what the requirements are, it's a fairly steep property back there where they've shown the general area for their septic. When you're in that, when you're in that, when you're in that steep in area, you're on 16-foot centers, and you have to have a 100% redundant system. Item 12 allows the county to require additional information, and I suggest to you that with this type of development, as suggested by Mr. Kilgore, additional information would be required. <clears throat> what you're being sold here is a pig and a poke. It's a wolf in sheep's clothing. And so for those reasons, I respectfully ask that you deny it at this time with the option that they resubmit with more detailed information per the Commission's requirements. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Kevin Spangler. He pretty much said just about it. <laughs> 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 Other than I do live, you know, right up against it. And I'll end up looking at all these campers, you know, in my backyard. It's not what I signed up for living there, you know, to buy my house. And everybody else is definitely the same way. So he's got most of it said there. And that's all I do. I don't, I'm opposed. Thank you. Sean, is it put it? Yeah. Put it? Yes, sir. Uh, same thing he said. He said everything. Um, I just bought the property on 464 J Moss Lane. It joins to his. I like it for quietness. I just feel like we're going to see a lot more campers back there and just be real loud. I'm against it. Thank you, sir. Mr. Michael White. <coughs> Yes, sir. Um, yeah, I'd like to start by saying uh, I'm, I'm Gary's next door neighbor directly to the east on 7254 Highway 136. Uh, I wanted to start by saying this, this is nothing personal against Gary. Um, he and I are friends. He's been a good neighbor. We've helped each other out. Uh, my wife Christy and I have lived in Dickens County for the last 20 years. Um, 
to echo others' sentiments, we, we bought this property, you know, as a place for our girls to to grow up on some acres. We're on we're on uh, we're on 20 acres there on on Talking Rock Creek. Um, you know, we we were happy in our in our little subdivision, but um, you know, but just wanted a little bit more more land to grow. Um, so just to just to echo others' sentiments, um, you know, had we known that we'd be living next door in an RV park. We never would have purchased that property, and, and, uh, and I'm definitely concerned. Uh, we're, we're living in the house that was built in 19-something right now, 900 square feet, with my wife and my two girls in one bathroom. Um, <laughs> our plan was to build our dream home on the property. You know, if this were to go through, that's, that's not going to happen, and my concern would be trying to sell the property with, uh, with an RV park backed up to it. On top of that, as others have mentioned, uh, the environmental concerns being on Talking Rock Creek. Um, and that's all I've got. Again, my name is Mike White. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Uh, Dennis Miller? That's me. Yes, sir. I'm uh, Dennis Miller. I live on Jay uh, Moss Lane, the end on Talking Rock Creek. Um, I expected more information tonight before I stood up and spoke. I may have missed something. Uh, an opportunity to look at drawings or um, other information. But I'll have to say, at this point, I'm opposed. And uh, for a lot of the reasons that were mentioned earlier, I probably couldn't say anything else more about it than hit all the good points. So I'm opposed to it. Thank you. That's all the questions or comments for people who haven't yeah. signed up. Um, Are there any questions from the board? Um, Mr. Or? Uh, yes. Uh, you said this was going to be seasonal. What season? How many months do you anticipate that it would be operational? Uh, probably like nine months. Ten months. Nine months. Mm -hmm. um, and have the activity bar, what kind of activities did you just like? It would be just like that. So maybe with an exception or you know, something like that. So you will be doing weddings and holidays? Well, it would be private, private use for people with that. Mm -hmm. okay. um, the private use would still be weddings? Most of the time would be activities with the campground. That's just... Uh, at two places it said 55, and then on one sheet it said that there will be 41 parking spaces. Uh, uh, I'm not aware of that. It okay. might be parking spaces, which is different from the sites. Okay, okay. There's actually parking, parking spaces. spaces. So there's not parking yeah. spaces for every site. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just going to How did you plan to handle the sewage? Is each place going to have its own septic tank, or a common septic tank, or what's the sewage issue? It would be a design system. It would be a, a community design system, probably based on the, the usage, which hasn't been determined yet. So if it's over 10,000 gallons, it'd have to go to EPD. If it's less than 10,000, it'd have to be designed to help help the public It seems like um, it seems like you want to know that before you got to this point of asking us to consider this. If I, mean, if I was going to invest money in something, I'd want to know all the ins and outs of it before I would ask someone to. I've, I've, uh, I've done the soil geologist and I've done the topo and uh, I've looked at other campgrounds in the area. One that recently was just built and uh, that's how I found Reed. He actually designed that one also. So they are aware of you know, the, the soil and they're aware of John is doing the soil stuff and uh, they're aware of what, what I have there. <coughs> I have. I drove out there today to look things over, and um, 
the question was raised about safety on that road and had about four different cars attempt to run me over as I was attempting to look at what was going on there. Probably now it's a little bit harder because it's you got the piles of rubbish there from the tearing the trees out. Plus they're supposedly taking that curve off. That's what the whole issue was there. They were they're taking the curve off. So so and they're supposed to and they're widening the road and putting a pipe lane in. So the sites are, are going to be Plus the other thing is most of the most of the people will be leaving, which would be the pulling out would be on Sunday where there's a minimum of tractor trailers running on, <laughs> so, <laughs> on Sunday. But if these aren't tractor trailers that were on me, they were people going home in a big hurry. Yeah. Well the, the, the state is gonna look at that too, they've been working on that. Yeah, they're putting a bike lane in there also. Roundabouts. And the roundabouts to slow the traffic down. That's what they said. Yeah. And hopefully it'll lower the speed up. Justin, have you looked at the, the issues that have been raised by our one of our speakers here relative to the deficiencies that he sees and yes sir you, you could if y'all deemed it a commercial site i think we'd I'd probably need to have a talk with y'all and with the, the county attorney because it it is ag and it's allowed as a conditional use in ag so um, i don't know if we can necessarily classify it as a commercial just because what it is but that that wouldn't be my determination um, as far as the other concerns y'all pretty much hit them but I did talk to environmental health. It would be an e in EPD system. Uh, our environmental health wouldn't even look at it at the size that it is right now. Um, other than that, do you have anything else specific that you were wondering? That well, there are a number of issues raised there that all seem to be legitimate concerns. Uh, that need to be understood. Counselor, do you have any thoughts? Any other questions, comments? What hours of operation did you plan on having the activities going on? Uh, the quiet time will be 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. And it's going to be family orientated. It's not going to be you know we're uh, we uh, we are believers and we we always gone in campgrounds we've been in campgrounds and RV parks all of our life uh, ministry and different things so uh, it doesn't have to be a rowdy crowd you can control that we will not allow it. You said a 14 days maximum if someone wanted to stay a month would they be allowed to at that point no. extend that? No, we're not looking to. We're not looking for full-time campers. We were in the same situation. We we love Carter's Lake. We have a boat there, um, and the reason I bought this property was so that I could come to my property and actually, you know, park my RV there and go over to the lake because everything is always full in that area. There's never any availability. Everything's slammed full. It's all mountain and all the other campgrounds in the area. So we want to we want to keep this available for people that come for short stay. We're not looking to take full time cameras. And most of the most of the campground is in the upper half, which is uh, pretty far away from the creek. Um, there's an area that we left open that that's going to be the extra area for uh, future or for not future, but in case the septic area fails or whatever that's the reserve is down closer to the bottom but most of the rv is from the front to about two-thirds of the property it's a long narrow piece chairman may i address a concern with this on the yes 
Um, under the code, states are not allowed over 14 days, according to our code. Um, there are a couple of ex exemptions. One's a natural disaster, one of them's uh, construction, and the other one is um, if a citizen were to get a building permit for their property, they can get a permit from our office to stay there for a year. But that's only if they have a building permit. All other stays for RVs in the county are 14 days. <coughs> yes, May I ask, is that specifically for rentals or is that in general? What what slate now, sir? Uh, the 14 day stay. Uh, I assume RVs. that's for just anybody. If you, have, if you have a camper you wanted to come park it or you know, stay on this campground or campsite. I mean, also there's, there's, I mean, Gary will tell you there's five of them down there right now next to the creek. So if that's, if that's 14 days max period, I'm just asking if that's 14 days for rental or 14 days. I, I'm just curious. I don't know. If that's all the question. It's period. And if they it's wanted, period. If, if they had concerns about campers in the county, they could address those concerns with the county marshal and he would speak to them. Commissioner Watt, did you hear that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So what will you do if they want to stay longer than 14 days and you can't get them out from there? Well, uh, like eviction-wise. He, he just said you'd have to address that with county marshal. Okay, well, then will COVID marshal. play a role in that? Pardon? COVID. COVID. Mm -hmm. Like it is with eviction notices now. We can't evict a renter or a tenant. Uh, that I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question, ma'am. Uh, you know, it would go to it, the property owner. It go to the property owner. It go the marshal would go to the, address the concern of the property owner. Okay. It's a, it's against the ordinance to be in a camper in the county without permission from planning and development. So therefore, if they have campers that they're staying in on the property now, then it would be against the ordinance, and they should not be in there. Regardless of COVID mm -hmm. or whatever. Okay. Does that answer your question, ma'am? Mm -hmm. I understand you say there are already some campers on the property. Correct. Right. I own them. Nope. Is that, I mean, how, how would that technicality, the county look that technicality? He had a camper that was his and he parked it, but nobody was living in it. Is that, that doesn't really count. I mean, I guess you're. That, that it's occupied. It's got to be occupied. Yes, okay. Uh, occupied full time or occupied. For more than 14 time. days. Okay, I get it. We let my kids stay there. I just got them so that we keep staying. They, you know, they come a couple times a year. We don't lose them. How do you have a motor? I move around. There's five of them there. I have two motor homes and three cameras. They're not there. Oh, they're not there. Yes, sir. Can I offer a point of clarification, please? Sure. If you look at the plan submitted by the Fegley, there are two surveys. One shows tracks one and two, and the second, which is the proposed development, shows just track one. The reason it doesn't show track two, which is down at Talking Rock Creek, is track two is a floodplain. It is undevelopable. You can't put septic in it. You can't have any development in it. That's why they've shown you, appropriately, the development with 55 spots in Track 1. What they've also shown you is that back here, at the end of Track 1 and immediately above Track 2, the undevelopable, undevelopable flood is an area for proposed septic. At 11,000 gallons per day minimum, which drops it into the EPD, the state, there's an inadequate amount of area here for a septic field, much less the required 100% redundant septic field. And you can't put it up here underneath where you have your people. You can't have anything above your septic field. And that's why I respectfully suggest that what they propose at, 50, at the 55 unit level 
is impossible. It'll never happen on this project. <coughs> because of the size and nature of the development, I would suggest that they provide the studies that your own guidelines for conditional use state. And that's item G, and in particular item 12, which is any other information deemed necessary by the Planning and Development Office or the Board of Commissioners, Pickens County, because the use proposed, the needs of the area, or the sensitivity of an area because of topographical, hydrological, or environmental constraints. To the extent that this is to be a real development, I would suggest that real information, meaningful information and studies should be done and submitted. Thank you. I would like to, to uh, clarify something on track one and track two. There was an adjustment made on that track, and that was surveyed, and that's track two. It's just a little sliver starts at nothing and goes down to the, to the creek, which is about 10 feet wide. That's track two. Track one goes from the front of the property all the way to the creek. And there's only the last the last five acres of where you go down the hill is where the creek is, where the floodplain is. But that's not track two. Track two is a, a, a revised piece of land that goes down the left side of the property from nothing to about 15 feet. When they did the GPS surveys, they adjusted that. Any other questions? Mr. Chairman, I, I feel that um, this proposed RV park, based on what I've heard here this evening, is a, is a detriment to the surrounding property values and the use of enjoyment of homeowners that have been there for some time. I also have a concern, a public safety issue concern, about ingress and egress and members. And for that reason, I would propose that we recommend to the commission to deny the request. I'll second. That would move and second to deny the request. Is there any discussion? All of those in favor of denying the request, please raise your hand. Unanimous. That, that hearing is closed on item one. For item eight, excuse me. Item D. Um, we will also have a open up a public hearing for item D, which is a rezone request RZ-190038. And uh, I'd like to ask Chestnut County recommendations for it. Yes, sir. This is a 11-acre uh, tract. It's located off of the Four Mile Church. Um, it's a portion of uh, tax parcel number 049033. Um, the property is currently listed agricultural. Um, they'd like to reason on the property of rural residential. Um, it's splitting these properties in half. And one piece is going to one homeowner that abuts the property, and the other half is going to the other homeowner that abuts the property. Um, staff recommends that the application for rezoning be approved. It matches the rural development area standards for the comprehensive plan. And um, in, in addition, uh, in addition to this memo, I hereby incorporate the entirety of the office's file and video recording of the Planning Commission's hearing, including an order to all witness testimony in order that this information be made part of the record and shall be available for the Board of Commissioners to review. If y'all have any other questions, please let me know. Uh, is Mr. Is somebody here to speak to Mr. Ray? Distinguished Commissioner, my name is Kelly Perry and I'm real with with Atlanta Communities. I represent Mr. Ray and Mr. Payne. They simply bought that additional 11 acres as a buffer to maintain their privacy against future development in the area. So Mr. Ray would like to have the five acres, five and a half acres he's wanting completely um, put back with the property here currently owns. And I believe you want to keep yours just separate. He's got access on Four Mile Church 
um, road, and this ray would be landlocked. So he just wants to incorporate his with his existing property. That's all we want to do. Thank you. Are there any questions for Justin? Or Second. We have a move and a second to approve the rezone request. Is there any discussion? No, the question just uh, ignorance as to what the what the zoning changes with the land now from ag to residential uh, how, how does it change the use of the property? Do you want to so agricultural has some agricultural uses along with a single family residential component. Um, rural residential is a smaller lot requirement. It's an acre and a half requirement. Uh, ag is a minimum of 10 acres. This parcel is 11 acres. They're splitting it in half. The adjacent properties are zoned rural residential and Pickens County does not allow dissimilarly zoned properties to be joined. So the property would have to be rezoned rural residential instead of say something like small ag which is five acres so um, it still allows some agricultural uses and it is still only single family residential but the reason why this request is rural residential is because it matches the adjacent zoning thank you all right so we have a movement second and any further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. The motion carries unanimously. The hearing is closed. Item 5 is board comments. Are there any board comments? I just say, as always, we appreciate folks coming out sharing their information with us, letting us know what they think about these issues. It helps us make the best decision. So thank you for coming out. That's important. Any other have comments? Uh, are there any public comments? Uh, item 7 is adjournment. So I hear a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Let's move in a second meeting this Thank you for coming out.